way back in the 1880s. 30,000 women signed a petition to say they wanted the vote from all across Victoria. No emails, no mobile phones. They did it in six weeks because the Premier of the day was silly enough to challenge them and say, well, you can have the vote when you get enough ordinary women to sign a petition. And off they went and got it signed. And today I had the good fortune to see the new petition, 100 years later, which has been signed by more than 30,000 women, as of course it should be, uh, to say that you can't have full democracy, full participation, without women sharing it equally. I went into the Parliament and for the first three years I learnt the ropes, basically. I saw the power of the men in the Parliament and the lack of power of the women and realised that we had to have a women's caucus committee because every other, everybody else had a caucus committee around various subjects. But we needed one so that we as women could have a network that was everywhere connected with women outside the Parliament but also powerful within the Parliament. It was a great experience to be a member of the Women's Caucus because we knew that as a group, working collectively, we had some power to make a difference and particularly to make a difference in the lives of women in the community. That was a very special privilege the decision to stand to be elected by the Labor Caucus as Premier was a tough decision. Uh, John Kane didn't tell anyone he was going to step down until he stood up in the Labor Caucus meeting. And as he stood up, he put his hand on mine, which was pretty unusual, and said, I'm going to announce my resignation. And with that, I burst into tears. And I was supposed to be the tough woman of Caucus. And everybody thinks, what's happened? Anyway, he stands up, makes a great speech and sad speech of resignation. Um, and I just sat there in tears. Carolyn Hogg, my good friend and politician, says, get up, you're acting Premier. Chair the meeting. So I got up and said thank you to John and, and then set the day couple of days time for the election of, of the Premier. A lot of women said to me, you've got to do it. If you don't do it, we'll lose the one opportunity in decades to have a woman as leader and how will it look if you who have been preaching leadership don't take leadership when it's offered. I got a phone call from my opponent and he said, why don't you come over and talk about who's going to run, who's going to be Premier. I said, OK. So I get in the car and I'm halfway over there and I say, bloody hell. And my driver says, what's the matter? And I said, here I am, acting Premier. I get a phone call from a bloke and I go over to meet him. I should have said, no, you come and meet me on my territory. Anyway, I didn't and it didn't really matter, but it was just an incident that you know you kind of handle it wrong to start with. So over I go, um, he outlined why he wanted to be Premier and what he would do. And he said, what do you think? And I said, oh, that was terrific. Uh, very impressive. You've really got it all worked out. And he said, so you'll be my deputy? And I said, no, but I think you can be mine. He wasn't, anyway. Then I moved into what has to be the most difficult time of my life, I think, other than my parents dying. And uh, I had to learn again on the job because when you're Premier, the buck stops with you. When I left the Parliament in 1994, there were four Labour women left 
and at its peak when I'd been there, uh, it was 14. You can't have democracy unless the 52% of the society, which is women, is equally represented. And you can't have the diversity of experiences reflected. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we decided we had to change the rules. You can't just ask to be a Member of Parliament. It has to be in the rules that we want equity. So we moved to get affirmative action written into the rules so that at least 35% of people selected in winnable seats had to be women. And then we sat back and waited for it all to happen. Of course they'd choose women, wouldn't they, if they had the chance? Very talented women, but did they? No. The situation in 96, when the Federal Labor Party got defeated, uh, was just as bad. And so we realised we had to change the culture as well as the rules. And people like Leonie Morgan and myself and Kay and Julia Gillard and Candy Broad uh, set about uh, setting up an organisation called Emily's List, which was based on an American model uh, of mentoring, of training and of raising money for women on the proviso that they were pro-choice, pro-equity uh, and uh, pro-equal pay and pro-child care and uh, supported diversity. So I guess in all we've done, it's all been based on clear principles of equity and on an absolute commitment to doing things through collaboration and effective networking. That for me is the basis of politics.